everybody to the 27th episode of Ethan and Mike. I'm your host, Ethan. I'm Mike. And today we're going to have some great topics today. But first, as always, how you doing, Mike? Hey, man. I'm, I'm good because for once I actually got to go out of the house this past week a couple of times. So honestly, I'm, I'm super happy. Uh, if, if you know, I hung out with Sammy on, on, um, Tuesday because Monday was her birthday. So I decided to hang out with her and we got some Froyo. And then on Wednesday, I actually hung out with Emma and we went and played mini golf, got some food, walked around Pembroke Gardens and stuff like that. So, and then today, actually, I finally got out of the house again, (laughs) but this time time in the week in a row. Yeah, but this time it was actually a bit more nerve-wracking because I actually had to go out on the highway to go all the way up an hour and a half to Port St. Lucie just to pick up my sister who was in Orlando with my cousin all the way just to come all the way back home, which is another hour and a half. So I was on the road for about three hours today. And I was like, well, at least I got out of the house this time. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. I did nothing. I did nothing you sound for for granted there you're taking things for granted at least you hanged out with friends i haven't hanged out with yeah, friends no, yeah, no. i'm happy that i hung through, out through with the court through the covid I I've, been, I've been i've been at work and doing this podcast with you man hey man much I, love man i appreciate you that's how that's how covid 19 is treating us you know i appreciate you bro love you likewise i just want to quick, make a quick shout out to the gen- generics uh, they were supposed to be on this episode for episode 27, but they sadly, uh, last minute, they canceled. But they will be on for an, another episode. Because I know I was hyping this up on Instagram. But shout out to them. Please follow them on Instagram and on their YouTube page. Y'all stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be a banger, and it's coming up real soon. But, Mike, are you ready for the news today? Always, man. Let's, let's do it. Let's dive right in. All right, starting with the NFL. So, on Monday, you heard about Davin Cook not participating participating in the Vikings training camp due to the Correct. contract extension because Correct. this year alone, this year alone, he would have made 1.2 million alone in his rookie year contract of the, but he's looking for 16 million each year. But I've he's, seen some great, but I've seen some crazy ideas where sports illustrate. will be, we'll be thinking, should Miami take Dalvin cook? Hmm, that's that's interesting, actually. Although um, although we have Matt Breida and Jordan Howard, Mike, do you think we should correct. go for Dalvin? Do you think we should go for Dalvin Cook or just stick with the two two young players we got there? Hmm. Yes and no. Yes, because he does have that veteran experience and he will have leadership in the locker room. No, because I think we're we're building on the future, and I feel mm-hmm. like our young our young bucks in Matt Breida and Jordan Howard and Kalen Balazs too and Patrick Laird, even though they, they're they not doing so hot as we expected. But it's okay. Um, I So it's mixed. It's a mi- bit of a mixed, like, opinion for me. I don't know how you feel about it. So I can see it going both ways. Yeah, like, when I heard about this, when I heard about Davin Cook not, not agreeing to go for $1.2 million, at least for this year, I was like, I mean, you're getting 1.2 million, but I can understand because he wants the contract start to start early, then later, and then it's like starts dragging through the season, like how Dak Prescott's contract is dealing with right now. Exactly. But what I think about Dalvin Cook to Miami, I wouldn't think it would be a great idea since we have already Matt Breida, who's going to be the starting running back sooner or later in the season, and you got Jordan Howard, who's a, who's a good running back, and then you have Patrick Laird. Who is a good the intern? <laughs> the intern, the the book smarts, book smarts knowledge, man. That's for sure. That is Patrick Lear. You he he can catch the balls, but the running gets you the first down though. At the same time, yeah, he's a tough he's a tough kid. He's a real tough kid. I actually got a story about Patrick Lear. I know this was wasn't gonna be in this episode, but I'm gonna talk about Patrick Lear. What I, what he said on Instagram. So I asked him about. So what did, what did it feel like the first time you felt like you were in the NFL? So what Patrick Lair told, told me was there was a time where he was in training camp against the Bucks. So he blocked this one player. It was like everyone was laughing at him when he blocked him. It was like, it was so funny. I, I made a decent block, you know. 
And then he, one of the coaches says, you know who you just blocked? Nah, I don't know who that was. It was Ndamuk and Sue. It was Ndamuk and Sue. Oh, it was like, welcome my to the NFL. God. Welcome no to the NFL, way. <laughs> rookie. Yeah, that's what he said on Instagram. I know I haven't said, I haven't mentioned it, but just speaking hey, of Patrick the new, Laird. The new Dolphin showing the former Dolphin. Uh, not, no, that you're was, not welcome that, back here. <laughs> hey, that's one of those welcome to the NFL moments, you know? That's always a good story to talk about, you know? Yeah, I always love those, hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL episodes. Those are great. Now, speaking of Dolphins, though, we just signed another first-rounder, Austin Jackson, of his of his contract out of the, out of the three rookies. Mm-hmm. Besides two will gain the contract, as obvious. Right, that was, like, that wasn't going to be obvious. <laughs> now, we just need the corner to get signed, which I think by the time the car corner gets signed, I think it would just be maybe near to, near to, when the season starts. Do you believe that? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's going to be closer to when the season starts, probably. Like I will, I'll say maybe a couple weeks before training camp starts. But, um, yeah, I, I love both the Tua and the Austin Jackson signing. Those are signs that um, are headed in the right direction, you know. We're building towards the future, and we're still a eh, kind of young team. I mean, we've only been around since, what, 66? And, um, yeah, 1966. Right, right, right. I just had to refresh my memory because I'm looking at that banner on my wall. Come on now, you're a Dolphins fan. How you not? Yeah, I know. I, I, when I, the I, Dolphins I, first started. I know. I thought it was '66. I just had to double check my banner for uh for for uh. Listen, for I didn't have to. I didn't have to check. I didn't have to check nothing. I already knew that on top of my head. I like I, I knew. I just wanted to double check. <laughs> um, but yeah, come on, no. come on, Mike fan. Come on now, come on, Dolphin fan. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love the signings. We're definitely headed in the right direction with them, and I think it's going to mean a lot going forward. Yeah, hundred percent. Hopefully, we can get that nine and seven record issue. One hundred percent. But why nine and seven? Because that's a realistic goal that we get. You you don't think ten and six is realistic? We just have a tough schedule, Mike. You remember. I, I'm, I'm, all, about I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic. That would be, that'll be great, but just better than 6 and 10, I can tell you that. Yes. No, 5 11. Anything Excuse better 5, than 11. 6 and 5, 10 is a win. 5 11. 5 11. 5 11. My bad. True, true, 5, true. 11. Anything better than 5 and 11 this year with our schedule is a win. It's an improve, it's improvement. Anything better than 5 and 11, especially with our schedule this year, is a win, bro. It's, it's, it's a win. An improvement, period. Yes. Straight on. But. Speaking of Kaepernick now, so Pete Carroll regrets not signing Cap in 2017. But then he hmm. says that someone's interested in him. But he won't say the team. Really? Now, now, do you believe in Carroll when he says that? When they say there's a team for him? Do you really believe Carroll will say that? Or when I mean... you think of Pete Carroll? I mean, I guess I can because there are a couple of teams who do need that veteran leadership in the locker room and a really talented arm. And Colin Kaepernick has a great arm. There's no doubt about it. He can he can just check it down the or check it down short. He can throw a quick strike over the middle, and he can launch that thing deep. And he's also got great speed with his legs. He's very agile. He's very elusive in the pocket, and that's what made him special for all these years. And, I mean, it's a shame what happened to him because it, it, he really wasn't doing anything wrong. I, so I really don't understand why a team didn't want to sign him. But now, since they're saying that uh, a team does want to sign him, it's very interesting because I do think that it could be possibly maybe uh, maybe Jacksonville, like a backup for Minshew. Uh, could yeah, be Minshew, Cleveland. Yeah. Could be Cleveland, maybe a backup for Mayfield or a starter to, to overtake him. Who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe even um, in ten. No, not Tennessee. Well, yeah, maybe even in Tennessee because they're gonna need someone to back up Tannehill now that Mariota's out in Vegas because he signed with the Raiders. So I mean, yes, I do, I do like Pete Carroll when he says that because he's an honest guy. You know, he's a great head coach because before he was in the NFL, he actually was a head coach at USC where he coached. But then again, he was a Jets head coach. If you remember, in the nineties. Yes, you're right. He was also another coach in the 90s. I do remember that. 
So with I the Jets. For that. Um, it actually, honestly, it could even be Minnesota as a backup for uh, Cousins or maybe mm. Dallas or maybe even, you know what, maybe even they bring them back to San Francisco. Who knows? I'm going to disagree on uh, what you just said because if Pete Carroll really won Kaepernick back in 2017, it would have been like Russell Wilson and Cap. It's kind of like how the Dallas Cowboys have it right now where they have Dak Prescott and Andy Dolan. Because Andy Dolan has playoff experience. Kaepernick had Super Bowl experience too and playoff experience. Right, and, it's the court, of, and, they're, yeah. and they're back in quarterback at the time. Who was it? Like Geno Smith? For, or, for, but it, was, for it wasn't a great – for Seattle at that time, 2017. Yeah, it was Geno Smith. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great quarter, backup quarterback. He had no experience in the playoffs. But I think the reason why they didn't get him at the time is because of the chitter chatter that happened back in 2016, if you remember, Mike. Yeah, I know. And he really wasn't doing anything wrong. He was just standing up for what he believed in. Hundred percent. You can see the same thing now because it it has always been it's always been a prevalent issue. But what makes me skeptical, Mike, is that he only met him for a day that time, and then he says he believes that so a team is interested in him. Hmm. That's the that's the thing will give me optimistic because it's like, wait, this man only met him one time in that in that locker room in Seattle, and that was it. And all of a sudden, he knows where Kaepernick has interest in hmm. after two after three years. Excuse me, three years. If you think hmm. on it, you ask like his agent. Think about it. Like, let's say like if I if I wanted a job and you didn't know who I was and you met me the other day, oh oh yeah, he's he's a good guy or like he's oh he's a bad guy just because of experience. That's not his true character. Right, like obviously, like I, I would know that stuff about you. However, I would still like want to, like, bring you in for a meeting just to double check and make yeah, sure. Yeah, like, more, more meetings, you know. Exactly. See how you are. You can't just judge. Oh yeah, he's gonna go over there. Exactly. You can't judge a book by its cover. It's like they always say. You gotta, you gotta really dig deep into it. Which, I believe, Carol is not telling, saying all the truth because if you really, if you really want Kaepernick. That would have been a, a solid backup quarterback for Seattle, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Because you have Russell Wilson. He's a great mobile quarterback. He's won a championship for Seattle. And if yep. you got her, you have Kaepernick, who's most likely the same as Russell Wilson. A little bit different, but they both run. They both are mobile quarterbacks. And they both have overall. tremendous arm talent as well. Tremendous arm talent, exactly. All right, well, I, I hope you don't mind, but I actually kind of want to segue into the next segment, and I want to ask you a question. So, the NBA has, has as we all know, they've been confirmed to return to, to action to resume the season on July 30th. However, there have been some players, such as Kyrie Irving, who really disagree with the whole idea of resuming the NBA season, and they're not supportive of it. Austin Rivers kind of clap back at him saying like he he doesn't really understand what why Kyrie why Kyrie's saying this so I want to hear your take on it so do you agree with Kyrie Irving in saying that the NBA should shouldn't have resumed the season or do you agree with Austin Rivers saying that they should have I'm in the middle between this you know like I just feel right in the middle I can understand both sides of the party what they're talking about you gotta look at Kyrie's perspective of what's going on in this country right now. You have of the course, COVID, COVID you have the COVID nineteen happening. You have the George Floyd and the social social atmosphere is not very clear. It's not together. It's kind of really apart, as you can tell throughout the, our nation. If you if you've seen in the past few weeks, so I can understand where Kyrie's point of view, and it's 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 kind of odd because like it's a contact sport. It's just like football. When when the when you hear about football, how they trying to avoid the COVID nineteen, Mike, same thing. So I can understand Kyrie's point. Austin Rivers, I understand what he's trying to go. He's like, I want to play ball, you know. He's like, he wants to play ball. That's what he wants to do. Which I understand that. Which I, it'll still come no matter what. It's just you gotta think of different perspectives, you know. Mm-hmm. It's also a business too of the NBA. They want to come back. They will go back. 
but it was just going to be it's going to be like testing there's always going to be testing to see how it works right you know right it's always everything's a risk right now it's like yeah. opening yeah, the stores is a risk opening basketball up nfl sports up trying to relive what we used to live without like wearing masks and stuff like that right exactly it's it's a scary time i'm telling you which yeah. which to me like i'm in the middle between both of them it's like i want to see basketball but you gotta understand what's going on right now at the same time exactly you gotta understand what the players are talking about you know mm-hmm. that's how I, that's how i feel as of right now about the situation okay but what's your take on it Again, it's like you said, like I can understand where both arguments are coming from. I get Kyrie, you know, I mean, obviously as a black man, he, he's really going through a lot right now, as are most people in this country, because obviously the, the racial injustice and this uh, somewhat continued segregation, as some people will call it, a discrimination against black citizens and the victims and all this violence. So I can understand, and along with this whole COVID-19 pandemic, no, obviously he wants to keep himself safe and the other people around him safe. But again, I do also agree with Austin Rivers' point, because you know, I mean, that is their livelihood. That's what they do for a living. And the, and like, it's what the people want to see, you know. Um, without, without the fans, there is no basketball. And kind of vice versa. Without basketball, there's no fans. So, I mean, obviously, you, you want to make the people happy. But then again, it, it, the fans don't come first. You, put, you have to put yourself first, yourself and your family first above, above your uh, professional life. So, yeah, that's what 100%. I say truth to that. Mm-hmm. Your health is more livelihood than, than whatever you make, things like that, you know? Right. Your, your life other, comes first. Right, exactly. And in other news, Na- the NASCAR has banned the, the display of, confed- of the Confederate flag from all future racing venues and events. And also, to kind of close out, so the, the MLB has just given out a new proposal to the, to the MLB Players Association. However... They have rejected that proposal, the MLBPA has. So I want to get your take on it. If there is going to be a baseball season, which I certainly hope there is, and MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred said there is, like he's certain of it, uh, I want to get your take. So when is this season finally going to start, and what's going to happen? This is interesting because baseball is still optimistic. They're going to play a season, but you just don't know when they will start again. Exactly, which, because cause the season was actually supposed to begin in, like, the last couple a- of days of April. March. Yeah, back like, the last couple of days of March, early April. Yeah, I agree. But I just think we might see some baseball in August. I can really see something in August, and then yeah. it's going to be short. I think it's going to be short. I don't think you will be playing baseball in the winter, in the snow. You know how some cities, like New York, for example, gets snow over there in right. December. Which right. It's going to look odd <laughs> in the snow for baseball. That'll be the first thing you've ever seen. Right. You're usually, absolutely base, right. Usually, usually, the baseball season usually ends either before like Halloween or like around November. It ends in October, typically. However, it did kind of go time. into November one time because of Derek Jeter's. Uh, home run past midnight that we all know and that's how we earn the name Mr. November. Mm. No, but that's interesting. But I just think it's going to be a shorter season. I think it's going to be some yeah. type of shorter yeah, season. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be, be a long shorter season. season. Now, what's interesting is when the Marlins drafted six pitchers in the draft, mm-hmm. and I like, this, I like this kid, Max Myers, from the Minnesota mm-hmm. Gophers. Yeah. Although, although he's, he's under, under six foot, you got a good fastball. You got at one point a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, that that kid's got some wicked stuff, man. And I kind of like the direction that the Marlins went in with the pitching. You know, we've we struggled for the last couple of years with our pitching mainly. That's one of the reasons why we constantly lose games. So again, we're building to the future, and we're looking 
things are looking bright for this team. You know, I really like in the direction that Jeter is is leading leading the team and taking the helm. Yeah, I just I hope the Marlins can get better than their mediocre as it is right now. It's if you go to the stadium right now, the only thing you're going to the stadium is either a you go get some food, or you just get a hopefully you get a home run from the the opposing team, or you just go to take to go sightsee Miami pretty much. Yeah, I've seen it there. It's beautiful. I can tell you that. Yeah, it, like it when definitely. You, when, is. when you're there, when you're near a little little Havana and all that, it's, it's beautiful. Okay. That's where the that's where the original Miami Orange Bowl was. Yeah, right they there. they they tore down the Orange Bowl to build Marlins Park on the, on those grounds. That's why it's scattered all around the stadium. You see like all the old pieces yeah, of the letters yeah, yeah. like sticking out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, you've been there. It, you just see that right there. That, that like. At least see, back in, see, back when it opened in 2012, I actually had no idea what all the letters were. And then my dad told me, and I said, what's the Miami Orange Bowl? And then, oh, shortly, after, and then shortly after, he took me home, and I saw it, and I was like, oh. we, tore <laughs> this, we tore this down for, for that. that. Yeah. What the hell are we thinking? Well, it was better than – because back then it was just bleachers. You had to bring your own chair. Is what my my family would have to bring to the Orange Bowl. All right. Well, it may not have had the luxury seats or suites. <laughs> it had. It was like it was iconic. Yeah, it was iconic. It had community. It had heart. It had passion, and not to mention it was the winningest stadium in the entire country, whether it was college or NFL or even high school. So, ha, beat that losers. But yeah, Mike, but that wraps up episode 27 for us. I just want to give another quick shout out to the slow grind, the G-Man Network. Hey, guys. We got to try to do an episode together. We got to try to do an episode together if you stick around this long. But also, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all of our major podcasts. I'm Ethan. I'm Mike. And go go listen to all of our stuff. And go watch our new YouTube channel where we post clips of our vid of our podcast every day. Well, maybe not every day, but we post highlights. Of our episodes. Our episodes and highlights of our episodes. But then until next time, guys, I'm Ethan. I'm Mike. Catch you guys next time. Peace out. See ya.